Consequential theories contend that the moral rightness of an action can be determined by looking at its consequences. If the consequences are good, the act is right. If the consequences are bad, the act is wrong. What is right is determined by considering the ratio of good to evil that the action produces. The right act is the one that produces, or is intended to produce, the greatest ratio of good to evil of any alternative available. There are two types of consequential theory, egoism and utilitarianism. Egoism contends that an act is moral when it promotes the individual's best long-term interest. If an action produces, or is intended to produce, a greater ratio of good to evil for the individual in the long run than any other alternative, then it is the right action to perform. There are two types of egoism. The first is personal egoism. You pursue your own best interest, but you don't care what others do. The second type is impersonal egoism. You believe everyone should be an egoist under this model. What are the misconceptions concerning egoism? Well, first of all, people often believe that egoists do only what they want to do. That's not true. Undergoing unpleasant or painful experiences is okay, as long as it advances long-term self-interest. Another misconception is that egoists don't possess virtues like honesty, generosity, and self-sacrifice. This isn't true either. Egoists can possess all of these traits as long as they advance long-term self-interest. What are some of the strengths of egoism? First of all, it provides a basis for formulating and testing moral policies, which is better than having no basis at all. And secondly, it provides moral decision-making flexibility without being arbitrary. What are some of the weaknesses of egoism? First of all, it ignores blatant wrongs. Anything is okay as long as it advances your long-term self-interest. It's also incompatible with the social role of most organizations who are responsible to the public. Egoism can't resolve conflicts of egoistic interest. It's every person against every other person. Therefore, it provides inconsistent moral counsel. When using egoism, try the following exercise. Ask yourself to what degree your choice of alternatives is based on your own or your organization's best interests. Remember that self-interest is always present, but it shouldn't be the driving force behind your decision. Utilitarianism asserts that we should always act so as to produce the greatest ratio of good to evil for everyone concerned with our decision. Utilitarianism is the philosophy underlying the modern welfare state, and it was originally formulated by Jeremy Bentham in the 18th century, and later fully developed by John Stuart Mill in the 19th century. Utilitarianism comes in two basic forms. Act utilitarianism says that the right act is the one that produces the greatest ratio of good to evil for all concerned. Rule utilitarianism says that ethical actions and judgments are based on rules. Those rules promote the greatest ratio of good to evil for all concerned. A useful example that explains the difference between act and rule utilitarianism is this one. Under act utilitarianism, it would be okay to say if lying benefits the greater good, then it's all right for a journalist to lie. However, we all know that lying detracts from the profession of journalism and affects its credibility. So a rule utilitarian would say lying would damage the reputation of journalism, and that would not benefit the greater good. So we'll go with that one. What are some of the strengths in utilitarianism? Well, first of all, it provides a basis for formulating and testing policies, and as always, that's better than nothing. It also provides an objective way of resolving conflicts of self-interest. It recognizes the four primary claimant groups, clients, customers, the organization itself, the profession you work in, and society as a whole. And it provides the latitude and moral decision-making that organizations and professions need. 
What are the weaknesses of utilitarianism? Both forms, act and rule utilitarianism, can ignore actions that appear to be wrong in and of themselves. The principle of utility may also come into conflict with that of justice. Under utility, the greater good is what you're striving for. Under justice, you want to give to those who merit it, even if they're a minority. And finally, it's very difficult to formulate satisfactory rules, even for rule utilitarians. When using utilitarianism, try the following exercise. Ask yourself which of the alternatives you're exploring will generate the greatest benefit or the least amount of harm for the greatest number of people. In addition to formulating the modern version of utilitarianism, John Stuart Mill also developed what he called the harm principle. The harm principle says that a person's liberty may be justifiably restricted to prevent harm that person's actions might cause to other people. In Mill's famous treatise on liberty, he says the following, Acts of whatever kind which, without justifiable cause, do harm to others, may be, and in the more important cases, absolutely require to be, controlled by the unfavorable sentiments, and, when needful, by the active interference of mankind. The liberty of the individual must be thus far limited. He must not make himself a nuisance to other people. But if he refrains from molesting others in what concerns them, and merely acts according to his own inclination and judgment in things which concern himself, the same reasons which show that opinion should be free prove also that he should be allowed, without molestation, to carry his opinions into practice at his own cost. When using the harm principle, try the following exercise. Ask yourself whether the good brought about by your action is outweighed by the potential harm that might be done to anyone. Is any of the harm brought about by anyone other than the moral agent, for instance, you? 